Hi, in this video we'll go through the simulation activity called the free falling with air resistant and so please make sure you finish your work first before checking the answers. A few moments later. Alright, let's start with test 1. So it said you have to drag the bucket at the maximum height and release it and then you observe its air drag, that means the air resistance and its velocity. So let's just do it. Uh, this is the bucket that we're talking about and let's go. So you can see it increased from 0 to now that is 20 and then I haven't paid attention to velocity yet so let's just do it again. So I, I think when we release it was 0 and then it increases in magnitude until both force are equal, right? Because the air drag is supposed to be upward and weight will be downward. And so in this case, according to what we learned in Newton's first law, then the velocity should maintain the same. So that's why the velocity maintained at 10, I believe the unit will be meter per second. Okay. And one thing you may want to notice is uh, when it increases speed, I mean downward, that's why it's negative. But then when the number keep increasing, this regard of the negative sign, it will get slower and slower so you can see here from nine point something like you, you can see it increase not as fast as the beginning so that is also due to the difference of the force the net force right here so i think this is something that you can put down all right because of the time i already finished my answers here so let me read it for you air resistance increased from zero until it reached 20 newton so these are the numbers that you observe and you should also notice that 20 Newton is the same magnitude as the weight. And afterwards, air resistance will just maintain constant value. Because if you think about if air resistance continue to develop, for example, 21 Newton, it doesn't make sense. Because in that case, that means it will accelerate upward. And how can you do that? This is impossible. Number two, uh, velocity increase also from zero because it is dropped simply until it reach 10 meter per second when air resistance is equal to weight so this is the time when it reach 10 meter per second and afterwards it should maintain constant i should say that also okay maintain constant you can write the full sentence and lastly as i said both air resistance and velocity they would increase at a faster rate at first and then slower rate at the end so when it comes to uh, nearly 20 Newton or 10 meter per second, it will become uh, increasing in a slower rate. And here is a follow-up question for you as well. Why would air resistance and velocity increase in such a way? Why must it be faster at first and slower later? So please think about it when you do the later test. Okay, test two. So it said uh, just rerun the test with the break and observe what happened. So let's go. So this time we have to change to the brick and we have to drag you know, to the same height. And then we can also see at the beginning because we are about to release it. So both air resistance and also the speed, which is velocity are both zero. And once we release it, you can see the air resistance and also velocity, of course they will increase. And I guess you could also observe that it increased faster at the beginning for both of them once again and when you are almost 200 all right you can see this was almost hitting 200 and it takes so long to develop that last bit of the air resistance until 200 newton and for now it reached um, net force to be zero and you can see this is again newton's first law where the velocity maintained at 31.6 so this is something that we can type okay so here are my answers again and if you try to read this you'll find out the answer is more or less the same as test one except uh, now you reach the air resistance until 200 newton because that's the weight magnitude of the brick so that's why air resistance can continue to develop until it is equal to weight of the brick for the velocity because now it takes longer time for it to develop the air resistance until it, they are equal to the weight and therefore since you have more time to accelerate then of course this time you get to a greater 
velocity. So that's why it's no longer 10 meter per second. It will be another bigger number. Uh, it just happened to be 31.6 meter per second. And lastly, for uh, both air resistance and velocity like test number one, they also increase much faster earlier and slower later on. And so once again, why? Why would this be always faster at first for increasing the velocity and air resistance and much slower when it comes to almost the equilibrium? Keep thinking about it and I will address it by the end of this video. Next question asks you to explain the difference between test 1 and 2 and in fact I have explained it already and so here are the summary. So first of all the brake comparing to the bucket has a greater mass and therefore uh, it has a greater weight. And therefore the air resistance of the brake can be developed to the greater magnitude because at the end air resistance if as long as the pathway you know the distance is long enough then air resistance eventually would get to equal to the weight in magnitude and so um, air resistance eventually can be greater for the brake compared to the bucket and because of this, this as well it would take a longer time it took longer time to reach the so-called equilibrium so this is a very important word in physics equilibrium means when the forces are equal or are balanced like what we learned in the earlier simulation uh, which we call the Newton's first law you know that condition when the net force equal to zero in this case uh, then it will reach a constant velocity and for that constant velocity we also have a very very specific name so make sure you write this down it's called the terminal velocity all right terminal means it's like the end right already you can't change it anymore so that's is the uh, well you may say final velocity but that doesn't sound cool at all i think that's why physicists give it a name called terminal velocity so make sure you write this down okay test number three so it said uh run the test two again so that means just choose the break and release it at you know the highest point four nine zero meter and then when the brake is about 150, but I, I think at that time it should be terminal velocity already, so it will still be 31.6. And at that time, don't just let it let it go. Uh, we would like to deploy the bigger parachute. So let's just try it out. So the brake, drag it up, oh, drag it to the top. Oh, come on, to the top. Okay, and um, well, the same thing happened. So the air resistance reach, it's going to reach 200, the speed, is going to reach to be so-called terminal velocity when both of the force equal okay so yeah here we go and so about this time okay we will deploy so you can see air resistance increased so much at the instant it's larger than 200 and then now it reached 200 again so that's something we observe for the speed Okay, it was 31.6 and then it quickly decreased from that until now again it reached um, a new constant value which is negative 7.9. So this is a much slower speed and I think that's why for people who you know do the skydiving you, you need a parachute for sure otherwise you, you'll be dead when you hit the ground. So for such a speed probably is okay actually 7.9 is quite large still so you may want to get you know another kind of parachute let's talk about the answers for test number three so first of all of course uh, i would declare that everything is going to be exactly the same as test number two before you deploy the parachute because the whole setting is the same simply and so once we reach about 150 meter and when we click the parachute then the parachute of course open at that instant air resistance would instantly increase to a large value so if you somehow pay attention to that you know the the arrow itself it goes so large that it's out of the screen right so i can't even see the, the number because it's just too quick right but then obviously that arrow is going to be really long and so that means the air resistance is going to going to be really large at the same time, the velocity magnitude also start decreasing. That means it is decelerating 
uh, very significantly. That means very quickly. Okay, so it would decrease. Uh, and obviously, this is because the air resistance is much, much greater than the weight. So think about the tug of war in the previous simulation activity. Uh, this is like the two team. One team is the air resistant team. One team is the weight that team. So right now, air resistant team uh, suddenly pulls so high, like pulls so you know significantly, and so uh, that's why the speed would get you know pull, try to be pulled up. But then since it's already going down, then the speed would decrease, not going as fast as it was. So it was thirty one point six, and then eventually it got lower and lower and lower, until the air resistant uh, well eventually oh uh, here I also talk about the rate the air resistant at the beginning also decrease all right so they don't it, it doesn't just stay at the large value uh, forever but it will actually decrease very quickly at first and then gradually until it reached to 200 Newton again all right that will be again uh, equal to the weight similar to our previous studies and in at that moment, the new terminal velocity, so again, here is a very important word, new terminal velocity of 7.9 meter per second will be rich. All right, so here is task number four, which basically is the same as number three, except this time you deploy the smaller parachute. That means the lower one in the simulation. So let's just go and try it out. So this time, again, remember uh, at the beginning, there's no parachute. So I'll still let it go until it reached terminal velocity at around 150 meter. Okay, let's just wait. So I think for now you're very familiar with, you know, the rate increase firstly, very quick and gradually to be very slow at the end. Okay, almost deploy okay so now this time you can see also see the air resistance becomes so large but then seems it's not as large compared to the first one like to the bigger one and so that's why the speed you can see now it reach uh, is, is not as much right it's 15.8 only okay so here is my explanation for test number four so first of all for description uh, again it will be the same as test number three except a few things that is uh, the area system wasn't as large this time when the parachute was just de deployed at the same time uh, well the velocity also decreased but that it doesn't decrease as much quickly in test number four in this test than the one in test three test three is like go but like, literally drop like so quickly but this one is like not as fast and so in this case uh, the new terminal velocity is much greater, like a faster speed, uh, even though it's constant, but then the speed itself is still quite fast, so 15.8 meter per second. So this one for sure is not good at all. If you skydive with this one, probably you still uh, get injured. Probably. You may not be dead, but you get injured probably. So not good right? to use a small parachute that, so that's why if you go to uh, I mean at least seeing those people go for skydiving those are always so large right you don't use a tiny one. I mean imagine you use a size that is like your umbrella that's not going to be very useful for explaining the difference between test number four and three so why would that make a difference then uh, we can see here so the parachute in test three like in the earlier one, has a much greater surface area than the one in test number four. And recall what you learned in the earlier half of chapter two, we talk about air resistance. Remember, I uh, use uh, you know, tissue paper or wherever you can use a test. Uh, we talk about the two factors that affects the magnitude of the air resistance. So one of them is the surface area. So that's why this piece of paper would drop much slower uh, then you crumble it, right? So that's one factor that we learned and this is the relevant one in this um, simulation activity. The other one, just want to ask you, right? This is not relevant at all, but then just to ask to recall your memory. Can you think of the other factor that affects the air resistance?
The answer would simply be the speed itself. So remember uh, when, when I showed you there was a paper, if you go faster, then you collide with more air particles, then that affects the magnitude of air resistance. If you go faster, then air resistance will be greater also. This is actually the reason why uh, earlier I asked you in test number one and two, um, they because it, it simply is moving faster. So that's why uh, the air resistance would increase much faster. While the, when the velocity you know doesn't increase as much, the air resistance also doesn't increase as much. So that's the reason why I uh, explained the different rate in test number one and two. But anyway, this is not really relevant in here, but uh, that is, you know, just to give you the answer for what happened in test one and two. Back to here, and since the surface area is much greater, then the air resistance increase much more significantly in test number three, because it's larger simply. And if you think about that air resistance and the weight, then the net force must be much greater pointing upward. And that is a deceleration to the brake right, in test number three, much greater. Um, and therefore, uh, you will be able to reduce the speed from 31.6 before you deploy the parachute to a much lower terminal velocity, right, when you reach reach 200 Newton, it will be much, much lower. All right, and for now, we'll go and watch a real skydiving. This is a really, really good video. Okay, so uh, I wish I would have the courage to do this skydiving one day, but probably not. And if anyone did, or you're going to do it, make sure you recall what you learned and tell me whether or not all these things are true or not. Okay, so we'll go through this together. I uh, switch off the sound because I'm going to commentate for you. So if you like to watch it with the you know, original sound, you can go and watch it yourself. So this is a skydiver already out of the plane already. Uh, you can see the parachute is at the back. So right now, these are the two forces. So one is going up, one is going down, obviously, before uh, I think she uh, jumped off from the plane. So obviously, they are equal in magnitude because you can see the length of these two arrows, they are the same. And that's also because she was sitting on the plane, so it's not going anywhere. So that's why the force is, uh, the forces are equal. And these two forces, by the way, would be the weight, which is going pulling it down, and also the upper force would be simply the normal force provided by the ground of the plane. And so I guess she's about to go. Yeah. So once you're stepping off from the plane, then of course you're no longer touching the ground of the plane. And therefore that reaction force will be gone. And the only thing that you have at that instant is simply the weight itself. Okay, and very nicely, you can you, you got a speed meter here, and you can see the speed increase very quickly already. Like uh, I don't know, five second already, you increase to twenty eight meter per second already. And in fact, uh, I think the animation is a bit slow here. We should know that we should realize that the air resistance uh, started to develop once she jumped off from the plane. So similar to what you have in the simulation, it will increase much faster at the beginning. Eventually, a terminal velocity will be reached when these two arrow, you know, equal in magnitude. So the weight and the upward arrow reaches the air resistance, they are equal in magnitude, simply because at this point, the velocity stop increasing, since the forces are, you know, equal in magnitude, and that means net force is zero. So once again, recall Newton's first law you learned, then you can only reach a constant velocity, which is 55 meter per second right now. And also because of having a constant velocity, then air resistance cannot increase further. Because again, like we said, air resistance depends on the velocity. Okay, let's continue. So very soon, uh, she will open the parachute. 
in reality you don't want to open too early because if you open too early then that means you take too long to reach your ground okay so uh, it could be one hour and you don't want that because you may want to go to washroom simply so you I mean listen to your instructor they will tell you when to open so uh, you don't want to open too early or too late of course and by the way um, when you when you try to see like what the reason why like you spread out your arms and legs that's simply to increase your surface area as well at the same time uh, you want to make yourself uh, you know not not hitting you know not tangling and so I suppose that would be the best position so now she's going to open the parachute okay so once she open it you can see all right, at this very short instant the air resistance increased significantly. Once again, that's something to do with the surface area suddenly increased so much. Originally, the surface area before she opened was simply her body, you know, that area that collide with the air. But now, since with the parachute, then the surface area is much larger. And so in this case, the air resistance also go instantly much greater. And so you can see the speed all right, at the beginning already decreased so fast, like so quickly when it's deployed. So this is what you can see. And at the same time, because the speed got decreased, air resistance also got decreased as well. Decreased until to a state where it is equal to the weight again. And now a new terminal velocity will be reached. And here will be five meter per second and that is certainly a safe speed for you to land okay so I think that's basically it well you, you may see like why why the upward force suddenly increase so much that's because something to do with the reaction force from the ground so that would uh, help you to decelerate that five meter per second as well and then you will stop onto the ground simply okay very nice educational video uh, I would recommend you to go and watch it again yourself um, with you know the original commentary all right so in this video you learn about what it means by terminal velocity and why it would happen so make sure you are able to explain the whole process not just skydiving but in a similar situation where the air resistance can be developed and also affects the velocity and then the velocity affects the air resistance again and eventually reaching the terminal velocity all right this is quite popular in the IGCSE exam I hope you enjoy learning physics with me if you do so please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel I'll see you again in the next video bye